All right, this is the example that we did in class, so I wanted to put it out there as a video um, so that we could follow along the different steps. And so what we were going to look at was what the bare land value, the soil expectation value of a single acre of forest would be. And we had this set of criteria. So this is on the PowerPoint, um, one of the slides there. We had a cost of planting that was going to be $200 per acre. At, ro at revenue at rotation, so 55 years, the rotation T, we're going to have 18.1 thousand board feet per acre, so that's a log volume, this is logs, and we're going to get paid 200 of these MBF, these thousand board feet per acre. So we have 18.1 of these per acre, we're going to get paid $200 per one of those, which means we're going to get $3,620 of revenue at year 55. We're using a 4% discount rate to evaluate this. And so the first thing we want to do is we'll start a timeline. And so, oh, we can't see that very well, can we? Let's go back a little bit there. All right, so we're starting our timeline and we're going to start with age zero of the stand. Let's maybe turn that off. Age zero. And we're going, <laughs> sorry about the video quality there. At 55 years, we are going to have a first harvest. And then if you think about it going out, the second rotation will be at 110 years. The third rotation would be at 165 years. And that goes on and on and on and on. So now let's put, that's our timeline with our rotations in it every 55 years. We have two things going on. First, we're going to have planting. We're going to plant it now. It's bare land. We're going to plant it at year 55. We're going to have to plant it again at 110 after we harvest. And we're going to plant it again out there. And every time we cut it before we plant, we're going to get 3620 here. And so again with 36, 20, and 36, 20. And let's see if I can somehow make this better. The lighting is not good. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we have our timeline. Then we want to think about what we have going on here. And so we can think about it in terms of what we have on our equation tree. So this is going to look a lot like what we're doing in the homeworks, right? We're going to start, are these going to be single sums? No, they're not going to be a payment at one time. They're going to be a series. So they're one of these two down here. And it's going to happen every year? No, it's going to happen every N years. And in fact, it's going to happen every 55 years. It's going to go on forever, right? If it ended, that would just be one of these rotations. So they'd say, what's the value of a single rotation, right? And we'd be looking at those. But instead, we're going to go on and on and on. So we have a forever present value, VO equals A over 1 plus I to the N minus 1. So I can write that down. I can write perpetual periodic and I can say what the equation is, VO equals A over 1 plus I to the N minus 1. We talked about this in class. If you just plug that into either your calculator or your spreadsheet, it's going to fail. So we want to maybe have an extra set of brackets out there just to recognize that how we're going to plug it in as well. When we think about what this represents, right, it represents 0 n, 2 n, 3 n, right? Payments that go on and on, and these payments occur at the end of these periods, and it would take all of these values and crunch them into a single number in time zero, right? So this is what this equation does takes all of these A's, these annual or these amounts that happen in 2N or 3N time periods in the future, take them that go on and on and on and crunch them back into a single value. What you'll notice here though is the A is here and not here. And when we look at our 
equation or our timeline, we see that we have this value here. So there's two ways we can approach that. We can either take this single value here and move it out there, figure out what it would represent out there. And so that's the first way, let's try it. So if we want to do that, that would be looking at an equation, a single value, moving a payment at one time, out to the future. So that's going to be simple compounding, right? Simple compounding, it takes a single number and moves it to the right on our equation. Simple discounting, or our timeline, simple discounting starts it out there and moves it in. And so we want to compound that. We want to figure out the VT, or in this case, in 55 years, of some VO times 1 plus I to the T. And so we can plug it in there. Our V55 for this thing is going to be minus 200 times 1.04 to the 55, uh, which equals 1729.27 minus, right? It's a cost. So we got this minus 1729 that we figured out. That's taking this value out here. And so now we have two values that we can look at at a single point in time that become our A. And so our A, so now we're going to identify the known values. Our A is going to be the two values out here, 3620, and then our minus 172927. So just quickly, why aren't we doing this 200 as well? Because that is in this series. So, right, so what we're looking at are these 200s. When I take the single value out here, it's the equivalent of having a 1729, a 1729, and a 1729 here. So I've slid it out so I have my A. I know what my I is, that's 4%. Whoop, that's a big thing there. And that my, sorry, N is going to be 55 years. So, got my known values in here and I can turn around and plug them into my equation. My VO equals 36 minus 17, right? That, let's just put it here, that's 1890.73. So, to make it easy, 1890.73 over 1.04 to the 55 minus 1. See how I got my brackets on there in the right place? And what does that equal? That equals 247.27. And then the last thing on it is to do the units, and that is dollars per acre. So under this management regime, right, this set of payments, I would be willing to pay up to $247.27 an acre. The other thing we touched on really briefly here was what if you just took this number and looked at it as your A, right? This 3620 there. So if I did that, I would have VO equals 3620 minus 200 over 1.04 to the 55 minus 1. If I did that, I would come up with 447.27, right? So that would be all of these values out here, but not this minus 200. So in order to get the same answer, I would have to take the minus 200 out, and that would give me 247.27, the exact same answer that we had here. So as I had said in class, as long as you account for all of the costs and benefits associated with whatever it is you're looking at, in the appropriate year in which you're looking at them, you'll get the same answer. There's many ways you can do it, right? But we just want to make sure that we get the right answer, we follow the steps, and um, hopefully this helps.